The challenge I want you to consider is this. Do we lack ambition? Are we so focused on consumer applications that we miss the opportunity to really seize artificial intelligence, algorithms and automation, and use it to transform our world? You see, I've got some bad news for you. ChatGPT is not AI, nor is Claude, nor is Alexa or Siri. Yes, they're a kind of AI, but they're a very small part of what's really possible. You see, while there are large language models, very soon there'll also be large behavioral models, large action models, and eventually, large world models. Because the only kinds of models that will change the world are models that understand the world. And to get to that, we not only need data and computational power, we need people like you who actually understand the physical elements that create the world we live in. So if you actually see it like that, you start to realize that we're not asking big enough questions. I mean, forget about building a slightly smarter chatbot. What would it take to actually create a world-scale, full-stack, AI-powered, autonomous civilization? Sounds like science fiction. But you know, there are places in the world that are a little bit closer to that than you might think. I mean, recently I was in South Korea. They've built a fully automated port now in Busan, where you've actually literally got robots unloading these ships even before they come into port. Robots are everywhere, in fact. They're in restaurants serving you food. They're actually behind the scenes in kitchens cutting up steaks or in distribution centers unloading boxes. South Korea is the most automated country on the planet. In fact, per capita, there are more robots there than anywhere else, even in China or the United States. One out of 10 of all workers today in South Korea are already robots. Here's the weird story. No one's complaining about them taking their jobs. It's got the lowest fertility rate in the world. The only thing people are arguing about is Chinese robots taking South Korean robots' jobs. Welcome to the future. Why is so much money now going into humanoid robotics? It's for a very simple reason. We're running out of data. Most of the data that these large language models are trained on comes from things like Reddit or Twitter or romance novels. But once you've trained these models on all the text that's available for free, you start to need things that exist in the real world. To be impactful, AI is going to have to evolve from these language models to models that understand the world around us. And this is really the next big shift. So if you start to now think about this kind of time frame of the next decade, if you really want to build a civilization that's powered by AI, you start to realize there are three very big implications, three very big problems that I think engineers in particular are well equipped to solve. And they are problems around energy, work, and intelligence. So let's think about energy. I think we are vastly underestimating how much energy we need to power the next generation of applications and infrastructure and industry that we're going to need to create the future. I mean, do you realize that already today, for every five queries you type into something like ChatGPT, it takes one bottle of water to cool a data center? Now, what do you do with this information? I mean, do you kind of cut back and say, well, I'm only going to use three queries today, that'll be half a bottle of water. Of course not, that's ridiculous. But it's not as ridiculous as people saying we should stop flying to cut back on carbon, we should start riding more bicycles, we should go back to a medieval lifestyle. Absolutely not. I think we actually need to change the way we think about energy altogether. How do we have a more abundant view about energy? We're gonna need lots of power. There's a reason why the big tech companies today are actually doing something that was previously thought unthinkable, which is that they're now considering nuclear reactors. Um, last year, Amazon bought a nuclear reactor from Talon. They're co-locating a data center next to it. Uh, Google announced they're now investing with, into modular, small-scale reactors. 
Microsoft is bringing back Three Mile Island. I mean, ironically, Microsoft was formed just a few years before the notorious accident that shut that plant down to start with. The reason why, weirdly in the future, environmentalists will probably even see that nuclear energy is green energy, because there's just nothing else that's going to be able to get us to the future without new sources of power. There was a famous Russian scientist uh, who talked about a civilizational scale. And what he said was that eventually we will classify alien civilizations, whether or not they've managed to capture all of the energy available to them. A type one civilization would capture all the energy inside their own planet. Now, arguably, we're only about 0.6. A type two civilization would capture all the energy of their own star, maybe by putting a giant kind of Dyson sphere around it. But a type three civilization would harness all the energy in the entire solar system, including even black holes. Basically, if we're going to level up our civilization, we need to exchange our energy scarcity mindset to one of radical abundance. The second big problem, though, is that of work. What does it really take to transform our productivity? What kinds of organizations are we going to see in the future? I believe that we are on the brink of a fifth industrial revolution. I know what you're thinking. How do we get to that? I mean, when did industrial revolutions become like Fast and the Furious movies, right? I mean, we're up to 10 of those. How do we get to five of these revolutions? Well, I mean, stay with me. We've had five, if you think about it. We had steam, then electricity, computation in the 1950s. Arguably, you could roll the internet, mobile internet, internet of things into basically a whole bunch of stuff that happened in the early 2000s. But around 2020, the massive investments during COVID that went into digital transformation and of course, the recent AI advances, massive data sets, more compute, have set the stage for a fifth industrial revolution. One that, like electricity, is going to transform industry as we know it. But to understand why this is important, you have to look at what happened with electricity. I mean, electricity was arguably invented in 1831, when Michael Faraday introduced the electric dynamo. But it took some time before anyone figured out what that really meant to change the way we work. In fact, arguably about 82 years before Henry Ford came along and said, hey, so this electricity idea, I know this is wild, but what if we don't just power factories differently? What if we design them differently too? In the early 1900s, they would go to a big factory, they would take the steam engine out, they'd put a electric engine in, but they'd leave the line shaft or the heavy industrial machinery that had been around there for, since the early Industrial Revolution. It was only when Henry Ford realized that with power, we could now have more distributed, decentralized, agile buildings. You could have different people doing different kinds of jobs. That's exactly the kind of thinking we need today. What is the new ways that we can work? What are the new ways we can make decisions? What are the new ways we can think about things like quality when we can now powered by data and AI. And only by thinking like that do we start to realize that there are very different types of companies that are going to emerge. You look at someone like Elon Musk, people think he's insane, right? I mean, who else is trying to run six companies simultaneously? He might be insane. But he does know something that many people have forgotten, which is people from the East look at this and they go, that's not weird, we've seen this before. It's a kairetsu or a chai bowl. If you're really going to solve complex engineering, infrastructure, industrial scale problems, you can't do it with a consumer application company that runs from ad dollars. You need deep vertical integration, uh, deep relationships with government, long time scales when thinking about capital expenditure. You need to think differently. And you know, it, it, it kind of is something we have to realize that the world's biggest seller of ele electric vehicles isn't Tesla, it's BYD from China. Where did BYD start? They made batteries. Because it turns out that batteries are the most complex and important part of the entire EV system. And one of the things that's going to change as we go forward, and we think about globalization, this new phase of globalization isn't just about smart supply chains, 
that use data to be more efficient. It's about geopolitics. And that's where things get difficult. You know, uh, you, many of you would know this. This is the SR-71, one of the most sophisticated spy planes ever built. It was actually designed without a computer, using pen and paper in the 1950s. When they were building it, one of the first planes built out of titanium. America didn't have enough titanium. Turns out the people who had the most titanium were the people they were trying to spy on, the Russians. So the CIA set up all these companies and they pretended they needed the titanium to build pizza ovens. So that's how the Cold War started. One country trying to build pizza ovens and telling the other. But as we move into this next phase of globalization, that's just not gonna work anymore. We don't need geopolitical competition. We need geopolitical collaboration. It's only by working together, talking together like we are here today, that we're gonna build next generation companies for the future. Because I believe the future valuation gap is gonna disappear between the idea of the technology company and the traditional company. And it's gonna be replaced by companies that are AI leveraged and those that are not. You see, in every market, in every category, in every sector, there's gonna be winners and losers. There's gonna be some companies, some of you are here today, who figured out that by leveraging technology and AI, like Henry Ford, to work in a new way, they will completely invent new operating systems, new operating models, and they will change the markets that they work in. That brings me to the final implication if we really want to build an AI-powered civilization, which is we need to start to think about intelligence and talent and decision-making in new ways. Even at the very basic level, you need new people that work in very different ways. I mean, think about it. There's a difference between the way people in the past used data and made decisions and the way that people do today. Now, many of you are familiar with Excel, I'm sure, right? You're probably even very proud of how good you are at it. You might be one of those annoying people that have mastered pivot tables, and you love showing people how good you are at using that tool. That is until you meet some new intern who tells you that you never need to use Excel again because they've figured out that you can upload Excel into a generative AI platform like OpenAI and you just ask the AI to do the work for you and, and in fact, analyze the data, generate beautiful pictures and turn it into a presentation. But there's another set of people that are even smarter than those. They use a tool like Notebook LM, right? They actually just upload the sources to that and then they actually talk to it as an AI that's grounded in that particular data set. So now they're having conversation with like the world's smartest analyst about that data set. What I'm trying to say is every new tool that's introduced is gonna be lead to a generation of people that have learned how to think much more cleverly and leverage their own time more effectively. So we have to be those people. We have to let go of the past. Everything that's made us successful is exactly what could kill us in the future if we don't embrace new ways of thinking, new ways of changing, and new ways of leading. Ultimately, even something like intelligence is not gonna be solved as simply as people think. There are many people in the AI community who think that human intelligence is just a scaling problem. If you throw enough data and compute, you'll eventually create a machine that's as intelligent and as capable and is as creative as we are. I'm sorry, I just don't believe that's true. What I do believe is true is that there are people, many of us here today are in that category, who will leverage these technologies to augment their own capabilities far beyond anyone thought was possible. So when I think about the future of intelligence, I think it's gonna be measured not by knowledge or technical mastery, but the ability to curate capabilities and navigate complex choices, even in the midst of high ambiguity. I think you're gonna be those people. 